Hey guys, welcome back to Sparkman Homestead. My name is Krista and we are on week eight, part two. As I said in the last video, I had to divide it into two parts because it was going to end up being way too long. So this is the second part of week eight. And tonight for supper, we are making a country fried, chicken fried steak, I think that's what it's called. Let me just double check. Yep, yeah, chicken fried steak, and it's out of my favorite cookbook. It is on page 475. And I have some sirloin steak defrosted. Now this recipe calls for um, round or rump steak and about one and a half pounds. I think I have about two pounds here, which is fine because we can get some leftovers. So I have a cookie sheet here with one of these baking racks on it because once we get it all kind of in the flour mixture, we actually have to let it rest for 15 minutes. So we're gonna get that all started. Now I do need to, these are pretty thin to begin with, but it does say that you need to have them one third inch thick. So I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of pound them down a little bit. I have one of these uh, meat tenderizers. So I'm just gonna hit them down just a bit, just to make them a tad bit more thinner so that they can cook relatively quick. Because this recipe does say that they take about two to three minutes per side. And if I have them too thick, it's not gonna take, it'll take longer than that. To a shallow baking dish here, I just, I'm using a pie plate. I'm gonna add one cup of all purpose flour. We're gonna add two teaspoons of ground black pepper, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then it says three fourths teaspoon of ground red pepper. And at first when I read it, I thought it meant, oh, crushed red pepper flakes. But then I thought, no, maybe it's talking about paprika because paprika is a ground red pepper. So I'm not sure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a teaspoon of smoked paprika in this. And then I'm also gonna put just a couple touches of um, this crushed red pepper in here just for a little bit of heat watched any of my recipes I, I do go off of it a little bit so we're gonna get this mixed together and then in a second shallow baking dish we are going to take one large egg I'm hoping this is gonna be big enough because this is not really a large egg it's kind of a medium sized one and then we're gonna take one fourth milk and I'm just using a whole milk here. We're just gonna mix that together there. Now we can take our meat and get it down to one third inch. Since it's already in the package, I am actually just going to um, hit it in here because it's not gonna spray everywhere and it'll be less messy. So we'll just leave it in the sealed package, then we'll take it out once we flat, like once it's all flattened. That should be good for that one. Just have a tray here that I'm gonna put them on. I actually had to take it out and bang it up a little bit because they were in really big pieces and I didn't want to fry that big of a piece so I ended up hitting them a little bit more. So we're just going to take one of our pieces, we're going to dip it in the seasoning, the flour seasoning that we made, then we're going to dip it in the egg and milk, and then we're going to dip it right back into the flour seasoning that we made. And then it says to shake off the excess and then put on this rack. And that rack is where we're gonna leave it for the um, 15 minutes. And I should be leaving one hand clean. Oh well, too late now. Okay, so let's get all of these pieces done and sitting on this rack. Thank you. 
Okay, so we have one tray here and then we have the other tray here. I had to get another tray because I didn't have enough room on that one. And I also had to make a little extra of the flour mixture. Um, and I think it was because I was using more than the amount of meat that it called for. We're just gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. We're gonna let those finish. I also got some kale sauteed up in just some butter and salt. Um, I wanted to do this ahead of time because I did need my cast irons to do the steak and I would rather the steak warm and then just reheat this. I also have some hash browns in my uh, air fryer and I'm gonna finish those while we're frying up these steaks. Again, I didn't want those to be cold and also I can't talk to you guys while that is going because it's too loud in the background. You gotta let them rest for 15 minutes so I will be back in 15 minutes. 15 minutes is up. I am going to get both of these cast irons going uh, because I want to do it quickly. So I'm gonna have two pans going. I'm gonna put them on a medium. This recipe calls for half an inch of vegetable oil, vegetable shortening, or lard. It says to add the steaks and fry, turning once until golden brown, so about two to three minutes per side. Remove to a warm platter and cover loosely. So I have my oven on the keep warm feature, which is about 175, and I put a platter in there. So what I'm gonna do is when they are done frying, I am going to put them in the oven on that platter. I have some tin foil here. We're gonna cover it loosely with that tin foil. Um, so then it says when we get done doing all of that, we need to reserve about two to three tablespoons of fat in the pan because then we're going to be making a gravy. But we'll go through that um, step once we get these all fried up. I really wish that I had lard. I'm actually considering making some. So in the meantime, we're just going to use an avocado oil and we're going to use, like it says, about a half inch. It uses quite a bit of it. Okay, and these are hot, I can tell. So let's get the big ones done first. So this far one, I'm gonna flip this a little bit sooner because I think this one is probably needs to be wet. Yep, it's burning. So this back burner, I just took those off because they were done. I have to cool this cast iron down. It's a little bit too hot. But I think this one is also done. So yeah, we'll put this one in the oven also. Okay, I think that's cooled down enough to get another one in. We have them all finished and they are sitting in the oven right now warming. What we have to do now is put one onion thinly sliced in here and cook for five minutes. However, we are not using onion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of bypass that step and it says to add two tablespoons of all purpose flour into this and then stir in one cup of milk. And what we're gonna do is we're trying to stir it to scrape up all of the pieces on the bottom. So we'll put in the flour. And because we're not using onion, I am going to put a little bit of this in it just so that it gives it an onion flavor. Okay. Kind of whisk this in to absorb some of that extra oil we left in there. Remember we had to leave the two to three tablespoons of oil in here. Now I'm going to take my milk and slowly whisk it into here. I'm gonna add some salt to that. It does actually say to add salt and pepper to this also. Remember, if, you're, if you are using onions in this, yours is going to look very different than mine because I don't have the onions in here. Okay, get a clean spoon and taste it. Better. 
gonna take that off of the heat and then we'll get everything plated up. There's my plate. I put a little of the gravy on the hash browns. It turned out good. I am looking forward to this one. So that is day 54 in the books and done. We are on day 55 and today I am going to make a little bit of something different. Actually today's video is going to be a little bit of something different than what I normally do. We made a chicken fried steak last night from the um, Joy of Cooking cookbook and it was amazing. Stephen actually said it was the best country fried steak that he had ever had. So he took some leftovers with him today to work and we are actually going to have it again for supper tonight because we still have a lot in the fridge and I don't want to make a whole another meal when we still have a lot of food in the fridge. So that is going to be for supper tonight but it is now 12 30 and I have been working all day Typically, I have leftovers for my lunch as well because I work from home. But because we are having that tonight, I kind of want to save those for tonight. So I thought that I would make some pancakes tonight and I am making them out of this cookbook. This cookbook, I don't know if you can see on the edges, it's a very, very worn cookbook. This was actually my mom's cookbook and she handed it down to me um, just because I absolutely love to cook and this cookbook has a lot of memories from my childhood. Um, you can tell by the worn page is, it is a very well used cookbook. <laughs> um, so today we are going to be making this recipe and look at the, look at the pages, it's just so worn and my mom even made a little happy face there. This was my favorite childhood recipe. Um, it is plain pancakes and because of this book and because we used to have it so much when I was a kid, that is probably why to this day I absolutely love pancakes. So I'm gonna make some of these pancakes today for my lunch. I'm gonna tweak the recipe a little bit because this cookbook is actually from 1978. So some of the ingredients are a little bit different than what I have in my kitchen now. Um, for example, it calls for shortening. I don't have shortening in my home, so I will be using uh, butter for that fat. But you could probably substitute it also for a lard if you had it. Um, but we are going to use a butter today. Um, what else? Oh, the other modification that I am doing to this recipe is I am adding peaches. I went through my freezer again and it seems to be like a weekly thing that I'm doing, just kind of going through my freezer and reassessing everything. And I found about four bags of peaches that I had in there that I put in there last peach season. So I have to get them used up. So I have them on my counter right now thawing out. Let's get started on this recipe because I'm super excited. I could eat pancakes at any point of the day. It does not, pancakes for me are not just a breakfast food. Like I literally could eat them breakfast, lunch and dinner and be perfectly content with it. I could eat them three times a day. <laughs> So the first thing we have to do is measure and sift the dry ingredients together. It has actually been a while since I've made this recipe. I actually have a pre-made pancake mix that I use usually, like the, I pre-made it. Um, it's just easier, I just have to add milk and eggs to it, but I have to refresh my memory on how to make this. So it takes two cups of flour, and we are just using a all-purpose, um, unbleached all-purpose flour. We need one teaspoon of sugar, one teaspoon of salt, and three teaspoons of baking powder. We're just gonna sift this all together and add it to the bowl. I have two bowls here, so we're gonna put the egg whites in one and the egg yolks in the other. I'm just kind of stirring these just a little bit just because the baking powder was on top. So I have two cups of whole milk here and we need to gradually stir this in and beating it until we get a smooth batter. I am actually going to put a tea towel underneath this so that my bowl is not sliding everywhere. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna go and get a spatula and I'm gonna go and get an apron on because I just sprayed myself. Apron is on now. <laughs> Should have been on in the first place. And I'm just gonna scrape down the sides and then I'm just probably gonna mix it just a little bit more because I do see a couple of lumps in here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanna get it as smooth as possible. We have to beat these egg yolks up. And then we have to add one tablespoon of, it calls for shortening, but again, I'm using one tablespoon of butter and it's melted. It does say to melt the fat. And then we're just gonna beat these in Okay, I'm gonna take these beaters off and quickly rinse them. The reason I did that is because we have to beat our egg whites until they have stiff peaks. And those um, beaters were really, really covered in like a thick um, batter. So we're just gonna whip these egg whites until we get a nice, stiff, beaten egg white. I'm just gonna check and see. Yeah, you see how we have, well, it's not, kind of. They're kind of standing up there. I'm also going to get our cast irons heated up a bit here. I'm just gonna put them on low because I don't want them to be too, too hot. One modification that I'm also doing is I'm adding a little bit of vanilla to it. The recipe does not call to do it, I just like to do it. And I am gonna do it before I stir in those egg whites because I don't wanna do it after. Because you really don't wanna, once you fold in those egg whites, you don't really wanna play too much with the batter because you want it to be nice and airy. So we are gonna fold in these egg whites. I remember when I was a kid, my Nana actually showed me how to fold egg whites in. And she says, you don't want to overwork it because you want to keep those egg whites nice and fluffy and airy. So that's pretty good. I don't want to overwork that too much. A couple, a couple clumps in there I'm trying to get out. I'm actually not gonna mix my peaches in with it. I'm just gonna top my pancakes with these peaches. So I like to use a coconut oil when I'm making pancakes. I wish I had lard. I'm wanting to actually go to my local butcher and pick up some pig fat so that I can render my own lard and have that in the pantry because I would much prefer to be using lard for frying things in than like an oil. So I have both of my cast irons hot. They are sitting at about a, a low heat. So we're gonna just take, I have a one third measuring spoon here, and we're just gonna take them and put them in our cast iron. And I'm gonna make them fairly small, small-ish. <laughs> this one I'll probably end up making larger because it's a, smaller cast iron and so all we're gonna do now is just wait for these pancakes to get a whole bunch of bubbles on them and then we will just flip them and I'm actually gonna turn the oven on to my keep warm feature which is again 175 degrees and put a plate in there and that way when the pancakes are done I can just throw them in the oven now I'm obviously not gonna eat all of these pancakes today that's this is gonna make it says this recipe only makes eight medium-sized pancakes but found that it makes a little bit more so what I usually do with pancakes if I don't eat them all in one setting is I will put them in the fridge and then when I want to reheat them I'll just throw them in the toaster and toast them up you can also pre-make these pancakes and throw them in the freezer and then when you want to have a pancake you can just take it and then again put it in the toaster and then you have a pre-made pancake for breakfast um, so that is another idea to do with them this one over here is looking pretty good so I am just going to give it a quick flip and then we'll flip these ones also they've got a, a lot of nice bubbles on them Should have left 
them a little bit longer. I might turn it up just a touch because cast irons, they gradually get hotter with the use of them. So they might, that might be too much for it, but we'll see. These should, should be done. Yep. Okay, we will put these in the oven now. The next ones probably won't be as white. Add a little bit more coconut oil. These are our last ones. We're just getting ready to flip them. So I was telling you guys that I normally make my pancakes with a pre-made mix. This is just one that I make myself and then I just have my directions on it how to make it. If I can find the recipe, I will leave a link for you guys below because this, all I have to do is add one egg, one cup of milk, and one tablespoon of butter and it's done. So it's kind of, you know, like the bag, that blue bag of pancake mix that you buy. This is exactly like it. Again, if I can find the recipe for it, I will link it below for you guys because this is a huge time saver. And plus, I just love knowing what's in this and like what the ingredients are in this and I know it's not got anything bad in it. So, so this is a super quick and easy breakfast meal idea. I'm gonna get these other pancakes off and I will come back and show you once it's all plated up. There they are. They turned out beautifully. So I'm just gonna put some butter and some of this syrup on it and then those peaches and that is gonna be my lunch for day 55. Hey guys, we are on day 58 of the pantry challenge. Now, I actually ended the pantry challenge on Saturday. We went to the grocery store. I have been craving bananas, oranges, and a fresh salad for a very long time. So I guess you could say I caved and we ended up going, first of all, we tried to go to our um, local farmer's market and they were actually sold out of lettuce. So then we went over to Kroger's and I picked up some lettuce and I got some oranges and bananas and I think I ended up getting some orange juice as well. Um, so not really a shopping trip, but we did get some odds and ends. Um, so we're half kind of done, kind of not done. I'm still going to be recording for you guys this week though and showing you what we are making because I'm not really technically using anything that I purchased at the grocery store for these meals. So tonight's meal, we are going to make a chicken chili verde. I was inspired from this cookbook. If you have this cookbook, the recipe is on page 435 and it's called chicken chili verde. Now, after reading over the recipe, I realized that I pretty much have that already pre-made in cans. I'm gonna be using our canned chicken and I'm gonna be using our canned salsa verde. Now, I have this marked as hot, so I'm thinking this is gonna be a spicy dish, which is okay. So instead of me taking half an hour to make this recipe in here, I'm literally just taking all of my jars and dumping them together and warming it up. I pre-made some brown rice. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna dump our dishes in our skillet here on the stove, warm everything up, and then we're gonna put a bed of rice, we're gonna put the salsa verde, and then we're gonna put some black beans on it also. I need to get this stove top warming up so that we can get everything warming together. I'm getting this heated up. I'm gonna add a touch of avocado oil to this. And then we're gonna add our chicken. We're just gonna heat this chicken up and get it nice and warm before we add the salsa verde. This would be a really, really good recipe if you did not have the canned chicken. This would be good if you had leftover rotisserie chicken. This is a really good option to make it with. If you don't have leftover chicken, you could just take um, a couple of chicken breasts and like bake them in the oven and then just do it this way and then buy some cans of salsa verde. This would be another way to make it. These were actually our last two cans of shredded chicken. So I need to can up more because this is a huge, huge convenient food that I love. The other thing that I did was I rinsed some black beans that we canned up. So our canned black beans, we're gonna put this on the rice as well. Get our salsa verde opened up. I am 
actually gonna flavor this chicken a little bit. I'm gonna flavor it with a little bit of cumin. Some oregano. And some chili powder. Stir it all together. Okay, we're gonna add the salsa verde in now because this is nice and um, warmed up. I'm gonna add two cans of salsa verde. And then we pretty much are just heating this through. All right, I just did a taste test and we need to add some salt to this. Definitely, definitely needs salt. And I'm gonna add a little bit more cumin to it. Give it another taste test. So I think that it tastes like it's missing something. I'm gonna add some cilantro because the original recipe actually does call to put quite a bit of cilantro in it. So we are just using a dried cilantro, so it's gonna be really, really mild cilantro flavor. I wish I had fresh stuff, but I unfortunately do not. And I think I'm still gonna add a little bit more cumin to it. It has a nice lime taste, which um, it's even, came and tasted it and he said maybe add lime juice and I said no I can taste lime in it but it just feels like it's missing something and I just think maybe it's like I'm gonna put more cumin in we really like cumin but I think if I had fresh cilantro this would be perfect dehydrated cilantro is just not the same that's a little better I'm saying that is done. So I'm gonna pull it off the heat and then we will get it all assembled and I will show you what it's like assembled. There's my plate. So I have the rice and then I put some black beans on top of it. And then I put the uh, chili verde and then I put some melted sh shredded cheddar cheese on top. And now I'm just gonna take some cilantro and just kind of sprinkle it on top. And when we have this really yummy green sauce that we actually picked up at the salvage store and it's pretty good. So I'm gonna put a little bit on there as well. So that is day 58 and it was a very easy quick meal which was perfect for tonight because I had had a really busy work day. So win for the quick meal. Okay guys, that does it for week eight. Unfortunately, I was not able to get the camera on for the other three meals from the end of the pantry challenge. Um, we did definitely eat at home, we didn't go out, but I had actually ended the pantry challenge a couple of days early because we had went to the grocery store, but I was still preparing meals from from home, so we hadn't eaten out. It's a little bit of a short video because life has been crazy lately. Garden season is now in full swing, getting everything ready to go out, and I have been absolutely crazy busy with it. So unfortunately, this video was a little bit shorter for you. I do have some more exciting videos coming up, so stay tuned for those. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really do appreciate it. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this, and I will see you on the next video. Bye, guys.